Hey everyone, Anthony Fantano here, internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a vinyl update, where I go through all the new records that have recently made it into my record collection. Now, a couple things before I get into the vinyl releases here that I have in my hand that I have uh, purchased. A lot of people have been asking me, Anthony, what did you get for record store day? Uh, what I got for record store day was sleep, because I was up really late the night before. <laughs> <laughs> so I did not get up at 5 a.m. to get in line <clears throat> for Record Store Day. There was really only one record that I was dying to get, and that was the Shoo Shoo Plays Twin Peaks record. Um, especially now, since I know how good that album is. And I am kind of regretting that, but it, you know, I'm, I'm happy with having heard it. So I'm, I'm all right. I'm all right. So sorry, guys. You know, sorry. I don't have any cool Record Store Day shit here. However, uh, I do have some pretty great records here, so, you know, uh, all the same, you know, there, are, there is some great vinyl here. Um, so let's just get into it. All right, we have a fresh copy here from our good friends over at Vinyl Me Please. It is a Vinyl Me Please exclusive, number 119 it seems, of the fantastic 10 Point Never record, Garden of Delete. Uh, one of my favorite electronic music records of last year. And it's a really nice package they put together. Uh, shout out again to Vinyl Me Please. Their link is down there in the description. They are a Vinyl of the Month Club. You will get a fresh, awesome, exclusive pressing sent to your door every month. You also have exclusive access to a special store where they have even crazier pressings. And loving the gatefold here. Nice picture of Daniel on the inside, I'm, I'm guessing. I'm guessing, seems kind of like an old photo. But, hmm, I could be wrong about that. But I do like the, uh, sort of the scratched out song titles over here. Uh, again, it's a really nice package. And then we have uh, this uh, sort of double LP set in, you know, each in its own separate sleeve. It's kind of like this milky gray color, very unique color for a, uh, a vinyl pressing. And um, <laughs> picture of a Roland, is this an amplifier? Uh, it looks like some kind of amplifier or something on the, uh, on the back. And uh, on the front over here of this particular sleeve, I love this. I love this image over here. Get ready for this shit, okay? What? 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 This is messed up. This is messed up. I could stare at this picture all day. This is fucked up. Face, that's like a horrible picture of someone, some kid's face melting. What? Did not expect that when I opened this thing up. And uh, on the back end over here, because there are actually lyrics, there are words on this record. We are actually given a lyric sheet uh, with this album, which is pretty interesting. Um, actually, yeah, okay, yep, Seaside, Child of Rage, yep, 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 okay. So it is just simply a double LP set. Just making sure, double checking here, because I did try the pressing out. Record sounds good. Uh, I just wanted to double check that there wasn't like, you know, extra content on here or anything like that. But it doesn't seem to be the case. Just really nice double LP set. Awesome, awesome record. So thank you to Vinyl Me Please. Um, next one is a tape. I want to give a shout out to Christ, an interesting little tape from the Vaporwave community. Uh, the title of this thing, love this title. Uh, no Lives Matter. This is from the Bedlam Tapes label. Uh, if you're into Vaporwave or if you're curious about Vaporwave or sample-based music, Plunder Phonics, and you're looking for something a little hard, kind of moody, brooding, then I would look this up. It's Christ. It's C-R-I-S with three crosses. Okay, No Lives Matter. This is a really cool little orange cassette with blue and orange labeling. The uh, J card over here features an image of a man walking through the clouds. <laughs> we have a Christ sticker over here. So I want to give a shout out to uh, Bedlam Taste for sending this uh, cassette over of this because I did like uh, a few tracks off of this thing. And um, a, a very generous fan sent me a record over here, a spare copy of a record, uh, I believe. He said he had another copy of this and he knew that this is one of my favorite live albums so he passed me. Uh, a vinyl copy of the name of this band is Talking Heads. I fucking love this live album. Ah! This is a two LP live set of uh, live performances from a few different points 
in the band's career, like 80 to 81, and I think uh, 78 to 79, 77 to 79. And um, yeah, it's just like a really great collection of tracks and live performances. It's so energetic. It's so electrifying. Um, you know, Stop Making Sense is great too, you know, um, but, but that to me is, this to me is like a good compilation, you know, it's, it's just, so, it's just so overloaded with great music. Um, you know, even though Stop Making Sense is live, it very much feels to me like an album in and of itself, in a way. This, this is just like a really great live compilation. Um, so the name of this band is Talking Heads, really cool double LP set. Really happy about this. The sleeve is a little beat up, but the records themselves are mint and they're in great condition. They played through great. So no complaints about that. So thank you to Adam for sending that along and sending this along too. He sent me this. I had no clue what this was. I was like, what the hell is this? Who am I? Who, who's this guy with the funny face over here? And then I read the note and then I looked at the, uh, the, the binder on here or the, the binding, the, the, the side. This is an EP from Clarence Clarity, who, if you know, was like, uh, produced one of my favorite pop records of last year, No Now. And I didn't even know he had an EP that came out before No Now. Um, and it has uh, several tracks that appeared on No Now. Those Who Can't Cheat, Golden Gate, Off My Grid. Uh, the song Exaltations is on here too. Um, again, I didn't even know this existed. And uh, yeah, it's a pretty straightforward four track EP, black sleeve, black vinyl pressing, but cool to have a copy of a record that I didn't even know uh, existed and very happy to sort of have Mr. Mr. Clarence Clarity as a part of my record collection now because uh, uh, I did really like Know Now a lot, although, you know, it does seem like a very digital record, so I thought just having it digitally would make the most sense. Wasn't, And I didn't run across a vinyl copy anywhere, so... Um, so I guess uh, I probably would have picked one up if I had seen it, but it's, uh, it's sort of cool to now have a copy of this. So thank you to Adam for sending that along. Appreciate that. All right, here are some records that I did purchase recently that uh, <clears throat> I was happy to add into my collection. We have The Cure's Three Imaginary Boys, one of the records from uh, earlier in the band's career. This is a pretty raw record, does still feature that very moody, very um, angsty post-punk music that I like from the band so much. And I am just, you know, another record closer from filling out my Cure record collection over here. Um, geez, keep just getting more and more... Cure albums, The Longer I Exist. Got this uh, quadru uh, Quadrupus EP, Pornography. I got a Kiss Me, Kiss Me. And now I have three imaginary boys, and we're just we're just racking up the Cure records, guys. We're just racking up these Cure records. Um, highlights on this album, for sure. If you, uh, you know, just want to give this thing a little bit of a taster. Uh, I would say check out... <laughs> Check out one of the last tracks on the first side. Oh no, uh, Object. Object is a great song. Object was really catchy. And on the B side, there is a cover of Jimi Hendrix's Foxy Lady that you have to hear to believe, uh, essentially. It's very herky, jerky, and um, uh, a little chaotic, very passionate. So uh, yeah, Hen Jimi Hendrix Foxy Lady cover on here that I did not see coming. And um, yeah, I like the album art on here a lot. The primary color swiggles are really cool. And uh, this, is, uh, this is an infamous album cover over here. I love the uh, Photoshop of this cover that people do where they just like put uh, the Sun logo over here because people say Sun sounds like a vacuum cleaner or a refrigerator slowed down. So, very funny, very cool, iconic cover, awesome. The Cure album collection is growing. Um, this next thing is a jazz record. It's from Mr. Thelonious Monk, Criss Cross. Uh, from my understanding, not one of his biggest records or most, you know, uh, legendary records, but still a really good record. Uh, for the jazz heads out there, we have uh, Charlie Ruse, on Ruse, Rouse, on tenor sax, Frankie Dunlop on drums, and John Orr on the bass. And this was pretty sweet. It had a nice swing to it. 
Um, I would say it's a very pleasant jazz music, but what kind of makes this record stick out is that so many of the melodies, uh, the theme melodies, the solos, especially coming from the sax, are very odd and very angular. Like everything about these songs, the rhythm and the way the instrumentation is gelling together just seems so easygoing and... Um, danceable as well. But again, I think this album kind of lives up to that crisscross name because those melodies are sort of odd and uh, they do contour in very weird ways. Not so weird that it sours the mood of the music, but it definitely makes this a pretty unique record in my opinion. Um, I haven't heard a whole lot of Thelonious Monk where I think the melodies have kind of bent uh, in the way that I think they do on this album. And something sort of weird I noticed about this is that there's like, it seems like there's a corrective label over here uh, that says Thelonious Monk's name. They might have spelled his name wrong on the record and then had to put a bunch of uh, labels on the album to correct it. Because underneath it, I can kind of see what used to be there. And it looks like they were a character short or something. Uh, from spelling his name correctly. Uh, but if you want to look up some tracks on here, we have Hackensack, T for Two, Crisscross, uh, Aronel uh, was a really good cut off of the first side, uh, Rhythm and Ning, Don't Blame Me, Think of One, Kreps, Crepuscule, with, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. All right, I suck. So anyway, uh, Thelonious Monk, Crisscross, really classy, really sweet jazz record with... Um, sort of odd melodic quality to it that was really cool. All right, moving on. We have a uh, cool, cool, cool compilation over here. New York Noise. Uh, this is one of my favorite eras in modern music. And there are a lot of compilations out there diving into this stuff. And I'm not even saying that this one is like the best out there, but it did seem to hit a lot of the major names that I like so much. We have Mars on here, the legendary no wave band. We have Conk, we have The Contortions, uh, we have Bush Tetras, we have, um, I believe there's a Glenn Branca song on here. I know, I know he was uh, sort of featured in the, uh, uh, the album art over here. Uh, we have Lizzie Mills. Um, I don't speak French, I suck. All right, uh, yeah, I know he, Glenn Branca is featured over here, sort of in the in the cover art. Uh, I know I listened to one whole of uh, of one of these records. Um, we have Alan Vega. Let me see, and and it's like such a mix on here. There's pure noise rock on here. There are fusions of disco and punk. There are weird noisy rock cuts with great grooves. Um, this is the kind of post-punk that I like. Uh, the song Implog Breakfast sounds kind of like a Talking Heads song uh, off of, like, Fear of Music, but they're singing about, like, eating bagels and, uh, I, uh, like, drinking orange juice or something. <laughs> like, they're literally singing about having breakfast. Um, it's, it's an odd, odd collection of tracks. Um, Mars, again, on there. There's, like, three or four cuts off of each side. Um, let me see what's on the, uh, what's on the other record over here. We have, uh, The Contortions, we have The Dance, we have Theoretical Girls, we have Mars, Dinosaur L, Chain Gang, uh, Bush Tetras, Arto Neto. There's probably something I'm missing here that somebody's screaming in the comments, like, Anthony, you're an idiot, and I hate you, and I wish you were dead. I wish you were dead, Anthony. Yeah, there's probably somebody saying that in the comments. So, uh, so yeah. <laughs> so anyway, yes. This is definitely a highlight for me in modern music, you know, kind of this uh, era of punk music where it's kind of melding with pop music but also getting more experimental uh, than it was before with noise and just, like, totally weird shit. And um, I was really impressed with uh, one of two of these records. So I know the first, I know the other one's going to be great. And again, you know, I knew what kind of names to look out for here. And I love sort of the album art here. It's so colorful. I love the contrast. It's really pleasing to the eye. All right, moving forward, I have a couple more records left. We have, oh, Kenny, Kenny Llama, Kenny, Cornrow Kenny. With, uh, oh my god, I didn't even notice that. I didn't even notice that. 
I'm, I'm just noticing something here for the first time. There is Braille on this record. Um, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it's saying in Braille over here. It's confusing. But anyway, awesome. Awesome. Uh, we have the credits over here to all the songs. Got all the tracks listed on the back. And it's a nice, heavy pressing over here. Nice, heavy black record. A lot of beef to this record. And uh, I played through the first of the two records and it sounded great. Sounded really slick, clean, uh, vibrant. Sounded great on vinyl. Happy to have this. And I also pre-ordered Untitled Unmastered, so that's going to be coming eventually too. So uh, looking forward to uh, playing this some mo. Kendrick Lamar to Pimp a Butterfly. hey -o. All right, moving on. A couple more left. We have... When I saw this, I had to get it. We have fucking Sex Pistols, Anarchy in the UK, 12-inch single, nice, with uh, I Wanna Be Me on the B-side. And uh, this says here it's a French pressing, uh, another import album from Gem Records, and uh, it says it's banned in the UK. Ooh, it's naughty. It's kind of a simple record in a bag over here. It's like it's a trash bag or something. I'm tired of these. I'm tired of these, man. It's not trash, so don't put it in a trash bag. <laughs> so, uh, so, yep, over here there is, uh, it does seem to be that there is a little French on the inside label over here, so I guess it does, uh, I guess it does come from France. Uh, so, you know, people in France have to listen to Anarchy in the UK because it, French France is curious. What's going on in the UK? Oh, Anarchy's going on there? Oh, okay, cool. We got to press it over here so we can know. So, yeah, pretty straightforward. 12-inch single. Just wanted to add some classic punk to the collection, and it was for a decent price. Um, this is a compilation that I believe was sent to me by Red Distribution. Shout, uh, shout out to them for getting this record in my hands. Pretty cool. Um, many of you death metal fans may be aware of the band Entombed. All right, you, you're aware of the band Entombed. This is a compilation album put together by the uh, people over at Southern Records of uh, Nihilist. This is the band that preceded the band Entombed. Like, this is what Entombed was born out of. And this Swedish death metal band, it's it's kind of death metal. I mean, there are elements of death metal on here, but the earliest stuff here is like fusions of thrash and hardcore punk. And it's like a little, a little heavier. And the vocals are, you definitely have like a growly element to it on some of the tracks. And basically this pulls together a series of tracks from all of their early demos. So it's like, you know, all these tape covers over here from their early demos. We have the premature autopsy demo, the only shreds remain uh, demo, the drowned demo, the head not found session. And uh, we have the but life goes on seven inch that was put out under the entombed name. And on the inside, we have lots of liner notes, lots of stories, pictures of the band's early years. And we have this uh, sort of record sleeve over here. Ooh, that's a badass fucking logo. Picture of the band over here. Inside this little pocket over here, I thought this was a booklet, but it's a pocket, is the Entombed 7-inch. Uh, so the Entombed tracks are on that 7-inch. And on the bigger sleeve, we just have the main record itself with all of the Nihilist tracks from all of these uh, uh, early releases sort of assembled together onto one big, ugly brown record. The only way I could describe the color of this vinyl is if you took all of the fluids from inside the human body, okay, and mix them together in a bucket, this is the color that it would come out to, okay? All the fluids, everything that comes out of the human body that is liquid, put it in a bucket, that's the color you get. And the demos are very rough, okay? There are some very messy parts to these recordings, um, but in one way it adds to the character of the record, and also, um, I think, uh, 
I don't know, maybe that was, oh, um, no, yeah, it just, it just adds to the character of the record. That's really all I wanted to say. It adds to the character of the record, and even though uh, it is kind of noisy, it doesn't necessarily take away from some of the performances, which are, which are pretty vicious. So, again, this Nihilist compilation over here, Carnal Leftovers, Nihilist, for the entombed and the death metal completists out there. And finally, we're going to end off with... Uh, a box set over here of Swans. This is the Love of Life box set, and this is essentially, Swans have been, uh, since the band has kind of seen a resurgence, have been reissuing um, oh, Love of Life and uh, White Light from the Mouth of Infinity. You guys should know those records by now. Uh, those are records that Swans dropped in the early 90s, but they've been out of print for a while. They've recently put them back into print. They've slowly been either putting old records back into print or releasing albums and compilations. So this is uh, from Young God Records, again, Swans record label, Love of Life, White Light from the Mouth of Infinity. Uh, very ominous album art over there. And basically what we have is in this box... The two albums, as advertised, sort of in their own separate box, so they're in their own separate, you know, little things, plus an 18-track bonus CD from both of these albums. So if you want to hear bonus material from this era over here, it's thrown together into this CD. Um, I've heard plenty of material off of these digitally, but I have not heard the whole records all the way through. So I'm looking forward to, uh, to giving these a listen um, from front to back. Uh, I've just been kind of keeping it in the box over here because I'm just like, the box is so nice. I'm just like afraid to <laughs> touch it too much because it just seems like, you know, such a nice, well put together uh, package. So uh, I'm just going to put it down because I don't want to like, you know, mess it up too much or anything like that. Uh, everything else has been, you know, kind of getting a manhandled and all that. Um, meanwhile, this has kind of been, just been, you know, sitting there and, and I've been looking at it. I've been like, oh man, this is so cool. It seems so weird. Like there's like some really weird shit in this box. Somebody sees this box, they're like, what the fuck's going on in there? What the fuck's going on with that thing? That seems kind of weird. So, I'm just going to be a good boy. Put it back in the sleeve. I, I will play it when I get around to playing it. But, uh, <laughs> for right now, it's just going to kind of hang out in the sleeve a little bit, you know, uh, that's, that's all, you know, again, I'm going to get around to it. It's just, you know, it's just chilling in the sleeve because the box is nice and that's, that's what's going on here. Okay. You guys understand, you know, you know, the struggle. So there you go. All right. Um, if you, uh, uh, happened to buy a copy of the, uh, Shoo Shoo Twin Peaks album, but for whatever reason, you absolutely hate it and you think it's the worst thing you've ever heard, cons consider passing it to yours truly. Consider passing it to your, your buddy Anthony, okay? Consider it passing it on to your, your, your good old friend, Antoine Fantoine. <laughs> and uh, I hope all you guys are doing well. That's the vinyl uh, update for this month. You the best. Transition! That's the vinyl update, everybody. For this month. I already told you that. But hey, next to my head, you could check out the previous vinyl update. You could check out our vinyl update playlist. We're pretty much the, there's a whole video series of every single thing that's in my freaking record collection, which is pretty amazing. <clears throat> Been doing this for a while, folks. And uh, yeah, hopefully you got some good recommendations from this this series from this video and you try some of these records out that have popped into my record collection. Um, especially, you know, look into that New York Noise compilation because there's, there's some good shit on there. Um, I hope you're doing well. Hope you guys picked up some good vinyl recently. Ah! Forever. <laughs>